Hey guys, it's April. So today um, I'm going to show you how to get this look. So a while back I had watched this film called Malpertui. The film came out in 1971. Um, I had seen screenshots and a few gifs of it over on Tumblr and there is a character whose makeup I really really liked so I was like I'm gonna watch this movie because I wanted to do a tutorial on it eventually. So I finally did. Um, somebody uploaded uh, the full film. Well, actually, it's the it's the shorter version of the film. There's two versions of this particular film. But somebody uploaded um, one of the versions here on YouTube. It's all in Spanish. So if you want to watch it, I'll leave a link of the film down below. Just know that there's no like subtitles. And then somebody uploaded like part one of the cans version. That's in English but never bothered uploading the rest, or maybe it got taken down. I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter right now. But uh, yeah, I had watched the film, and it's quite interesting, very gothic, very surreal and dreamlike. Um, incorporates Greek mythology. It's pretty cool. I don't want to spoil the film because it is quite an interesting watch. And... Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. However, if you have seen the film or you watched it after seeing this tutorial, let me know what you think. Maybe we can have a little discussion about it. Anyways, Susan Hampshire played three different characters. Four, technically, maybe you can consider it four. She did play nurse at the very end. But um, she played quite a few characters in the film and one of the characters that I was immediately drawn to was, okay, I'm going to butcher the name. I am so sorry, but I think it's pronounced Eruadia. That's how they were saying it in the Spanish version of the film. But yeah, she had this really beautiful makeup and she was really dreamlike and she's always looking down, which there's a reason why and you'll find out later. But um, yeah, I just really wanted to recreate her makeup. I thought it looked very beautiful and here we are. Anyways, this has probably been a really long intro and you probably just want to see the tutorial. So I'm going to stop talking and um yeah it's been a while can't you tell <laughs> anyways uh tutorial so to start off this look go ahead and take any foundation i'm using the maybelline superstay 24 hour foundation in natural ivory and with a bh cosmetics angled contouring face brush i'm gonna go ahead and apply this foundation all over my face i am working in small sections since this particular foundation dries pretty quickly but i'm just using little tiny circular motions making sure that i'm really getting that into my skin you can go ahead and use some sort of like beauty sponge if that's what you prefer but I've been really digging these new BH brushes so that's what I'm using. So I'm going to set my foundation and I'm taking this tiny little BH brush and going in with some Cody Airspin Loose Powder and just setting my under eyes and around my nose. And then I decided that I wanted to set my entire face so I'm taking a large powder brush and just dusting that all over my face. This is a very matte look. 
moving on to the eyebrows, I'm going to take my favorite Benefit Brow Gel and I'm going to run this through the entirety of my eyebrows but mostly focusing on the inner corner making sure that they are brushed up so they look kind of spiky. Susan Hampshire has a very high brow bone so I'm going to take this really light concealer and I'm going to go ahead and apply this just underneath the arch and I'm creating a bit of an oval shape with this and then just blending it out and diffusing the line but this is going to help give the illusion that you have a high brow bone. Take a piece of scotch tape and put that on the back of your hand and then peel it off to make the adhesive not as sticky and go ahead and line up this tape on the end of your eye. I like to use my eyebrow tail as a bit of a guide but go ahead and try to just get them as symmetrical as possible and um, stick them on. Moving on to the eyes, I'm going to pick up this blush color with a touch of this brown color on a fluffy blending brush and I'm going to go ahead and work this into my crease, mostly focusing towards the outer corner of the eye and trying to create a bit of a winged shape but make sure that it's very soft and diffused and try not to get this eyeshadow where we laid down the concealer. With the same brush, I'm picking up some more of that nudie blush color and I'm going to go ahead and work this into the inner corner of my eye going down the sides of my nose to begin the contour process on the nose. With the same brush, I'm going to go ahead and dip into this contour powder and with the nose, what you want to do is just build up the color because it can get really harsh quickly. So once again, I'm just building up the color, working on the inner corner of my eyes, and then slowly sweeping that down the sides of my nose, trying to pinch the end of my nose a little bit more, and once again, trying to keep it soft as possible. Next, I'm going to take a very light concealer with a tiny concealer brush and I'm going to go ahead and carve out a new lid since my eyelids are kind of hooded. But even if you didn't have hooded eyelids, it would be a good idea to go ahead and do this so you can see the stark difference between the lid and the crease. So I'm just making sure that everything looks even and that the color is opaque. And now I'm going to go ahead and set that with some more loose powder so that it doesn't go anywhere. I'm taking a tiny angled brush and I'm going to go ahead and dip into a cool toned as well as a warm toned brown to create more of a neutral brown. And I'm going to go ahead and dip into this burgundy color here in the corner and I'm going to begin to define and darken my crease. So I like to start out on the outer corner and then slowly sweep that into the inner corner, all while maintaining a bit of a wing shape on the outside. At this point, I'm just making sure that everything looks blended and everything looks symmetrical. If you felt like you drew your lids on a little too big, right here is a good chance to fix that. I'm taking a clean little pencil brush and I'm going to further diffuse and blend this crease. I don't want there to be super harsh lines above the lid. And as you can see, I'm focusing a lot on this inner corner that sweeps into the nose, making sure that that looks really soft. If you feel like you've lost a little bit of that depth, go ahead and dip into a little bit of that darker eyeshadow and define your crease a little bit further. I'm going back in with that tiny angled brush and I'm picking up the color punk as well as some of this black eyeshadow and I'm going to go ahead and start lining my eyes. I'm lining it at an angle so that I can get that winged effect but I'm also starting to sweep that into my crease just trying to make sure everything looks cohesive and I'm going to continue blending it until I am satisfied.
Now with this dense angled brush, I'm going to pick up some of that brown and I'm going to go over what we laid down and this will just help further soften and blend the look. So if there's any harshness, it's going to help cover that up and make everything look really soft. I'm going to take some black liquid eyeliner and I'm going to go ahead and thinly line my top lash line. And I'm also going to make sure that I wing it out just a touch towards the end. And what's really important is getting this inner corner. And that's going to help make your eyes look a little bit more feline and larger and upturned. And any mistakes can be fixed with some concealer and a flat concealer brush. With that angled brush, we're going back into that burgundy and that black, and we're going to go ahead and apply that over the liquid liner just on the outer corner. And that's going to once again soften it so it doesn't look super harsh. Go ahead and peel the tape, and with that foundation brush we used earlier and whatever leftover product is on there, I'm going to go ahead and just soften the outer corner of my eye near the eyebrow so you don't see the super visible line. Go ahead and curl your eyelashes. Is anybody else really terrible at curling their own eyelashes? Because I know I am. And now I'm going to add one coat of waterproof mascara just to blacken the eyelashes and to hold the curl. I'm taking a very flared out and spiky pair of eyelashes and what I'm doing out here on the outer corner is I'm trying to lift it up a little bit to once again make your eyes look a little bit more upturned and feline. Back with that tiny angled brush, I'm going to go ahead and dip into the cooler brown eyeshadow and I'm going to begin to line my bottom lash line. I like to start on the center of the eye so that way I can flick it out a little bit and that's going to give the illusion that your eyelashes are creating a shadow. And then I'm going to go a parallel to the inner corner eyeliner. So once again, this is just going to give you a very feline look. I am dipping into a little bit more of that burgundy color just to deepen it up a little bit. Now back in with that liquid eyeliner, I'm going to go ahead and further define this with that liquid eyeliner. Bottom eyelashes are in no short supply with this look, so I'm taking that liquid eyeliner and I'm creating little individual bottom eyelashes. And now I'm actually taking a pair of bottom false eyelashes and applying that right underneath my lash line. Right now would be a good time to cover any lash glue that is peeking through. With a flat concealer brush, I'm going to pick up some of the lightest concealer that I have and I'm going to apply this into the outer corners in that little gap that I have there. And I'm going to go ahead and get some of that onto my waterline. I'm going to use my finger to tap it in and make sure that everything looks soft and diffused. And this is really going to create great definition on the eye and make it look super feline. With a really dense blush brush, I'm going to go ahead and dip into that contour powder that we used earlier and I'm going to go ahead and contour what would be the hollows of my cheeks, making sure that they look super defined because Susan Hampshire's bone structure is amazing and I want to get as close to that as possible. Now I'm going to apply a very matte, muted pink blush, just a touch of that on the apples of the cheeks. You don't want too much color, but just a hint of it. With this tiny little flathead brush, I'm going to dip back into that contour powder, and I'm going to go ahead and further define the nose contour. It does look kind of pronounced in the photograph, so I just wanted to make sure that the camera would pick up on that. You don't have to wear it this heavy. And now I'm popping a pink pearlescent highlight just on the tip of my nose. 
We're going to finish the lips off with a nude color and I'm going to use this e.l.f. lipstick in the color Fantasy. I just find that it's like really the perfect nudie brown color for me. And because I wanted to cool it down a little bit, I'm going over that with this Kate Moss lipstick. And now I'm just fixing this shrug on my head to make it look like a veil since um, Susan Hampshire wears a veil throughout most of the film. It just really completes the look. This is it for the completed Eruvalia Mapertui 1971 inspired look. Um, I think this is a really beautiful look. Of course you can like go more light handed when it comes to some of the contouring if you want to wear this on a day to day basis or you could just leave it as is. Um, I would be totally cool with that as well. But I just think it's a really, really beautiful look. I don't have super deep socket lines, so if you have a really deep socket, um, you could probably pull off this look a little bit easier than some of us who are like semi-hooded. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, and I, I wanted to style myself a little bit more like her character. Um, there's an importance of having little curls kind of in an S formation around your face and if you watch the film then you'll know why but um, yeah and then I threw on this veil because it just makes me look kind of virginal <laughs> religious um, I don't know I just wanted to put a veil on because she wore a veil in the fil film as well so um, this is my sister's little shrug type thing but yeah um i think that's about it really cool film if you've seen the film or watch it after this let me know what you think because i was kind of like what the f is going on <laughs> and because it was in spanish as well you know and i i do understand spanish i, I don't speak it very well sorry mom um but it was like España Spanish, so there were some, some things where I'm like, mm, okay, the vernacular is a little bit different. You have to remember, I'm like Guatemalan, so uh, I was just like, hold on, hold on. Um, anyways, why am I talking so much? Guys, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a while since I filmed a tutorial, and I always feel really weird talking to a camera with no one there. Anybody else film tutorials feel kind of awkward and weird too? No, just me. Um, yeah, anyways, um, I'm going to leave a list of all the products down below in the description box and there will be other links to different things. Um, also, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone out there who watches my videos, my tutorials, because you guys are super sweet. You always leave the nicest comments. I'm I don't know. You guys are so sweet. I can't believe it. Like, I'm like, me? Me? Um, you know, it I, really means a lot, especially when one of my favorite comments that I get from you guys is in regards to the type of videos that I put out. And that's something that I always try to think really hard about. Um, because I, I don't want to sit there and put videos that you, you can see elsewhere, you know probably with someone more skilled than me um you know i like vintage retro makeup i like weird obscure films and pop culture references and um you know that's just the things that i like and it's kind of cool that there is also a community out there that also enjoys the same things that i do and it just makes me feel like i have a friend in all of you guys and I don't know you guys are just really sweet and I can't tell you how grateful I am for all of your support and love and I'm I always say this and you know <laughs> I never keep my word but I, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to film a bit more often now I'm just such a lazy person anyways this is gonna be a really long video and most of it's just me talking so maybe I should edit it into a different video we shall see um, thank you again. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want. 
And yeah, I guess I will see you guys all later. Bye.